Good morning to everybody. Today is the eighth day of the online lecture series organized by the Zoological Association of Bardwan. In this session, Dr. Shruta Padatta is with us as today's speaker. Now, I feel much privileged and honored to put forward Dr. Shruta Padatta. Dr. Dotto accomplished her MSc in Zoology and PhD in 2011 with specialization in environmental biology and parasitology. Her fields of special interests are parasitology, environmental toxicology, gut parasites in leaf stocks and their controls with versatile phytochemicals, biomonitoring of toxicant and their role in soil microarthropods, etc. Having been traversing through research as well as more than 12 years through undergraduate and postgraduate teaching, Dr. Dutto has the honor of publishing seven papers in different illustrious journals. Recently, Dr. Dutta has authored a scientific book which has been published from academic publishing and uh, contributes a chapter in a book uh, emanating the effect of plant extract on rumen plumes. She has attended eight national and international seminars to present her valuable findings she achieved through research activities. She is also uh, honorable live members of the Zoological Association of Bardwan and the Zoological Society, Calcutta. With this few expression, I request Dr. Dottu to start her deliberation. Dr. Dottu, please. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, sir, for your uh, nice introduction. And I'm very much privileged to be a part of this lecture series. And I'm very much thankful also to the organizers, the Zoological Association of Bardwan, for giving me this opportunity to be a part of this platform. So thank you once again. So may I start now, sir? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Okay. You can start. Can you see the screen? Yes, madam. Okay. Visible, visible. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay. Okay, so for today's uh, lecture, I'm given this topic for the UG semester five, I think. Uh, the types of synapse, uh, synaptic transmission, and neuromuscular junction. So if there is any kind of queries uh, regarding this topic, just uh, feel free to drop your queries in the chat box after completion of the lecture i will try to answer and if further do you have any queries you can write me to this mail id okay so uh, this is today's expected learning outcomes uh, from today's lecture it is expected that the students will be able to develop a concept on synapse they will be able to understand what are the different types of synapse, how synaptic transmission occurs, and what is the structure of neuromuscular junction. So before going to the topic, let me first discuss what is synapse. Synapse means coming together. So what are the other uh, near meanings of synapse as per the dictionary? This is uh, it may be uh, regarded as a junction between two parts, a commissure, a suture, a colligation, a conjugation, or a conjunction. So in biology, we use synapse as microscopic gaps, which separate the terminal buttons of the neuron from receptors of an effector organ. So the effector organ may be a neuron itself, or a muscle or any sensory organs like any gland cell or other sensory organs okay so uh, we can say that synapse it is the site of transmission of electric nerve impulses and these impulses uh, are carried between two nerve cells as i have told or between a neuron and a gland cell 
or a muscle cell so here the gland cell or the muscle cell act as the effector organ now synapses they play a vital role not only in signal transduction not only in transmission of neuronal impulses but also they are very much useful in maintaining a variety of cognitive functions like learning and memory formation so the more we use our brain the more we retain our memory now what is the structure of a synapse so while talking on the structure of synapse you should uh, keep in mind that there are three structures which combine a synapse now you can see here a synapse is a combination of three structures what are the three structures this is the presynaptic endings which is a part of a neuron a synaptic cleft that is a, a gap between a neuron or and a, and an effector organ and the post synaptic ending here this is the post synaptic ending so the synapse a typical synapse when we are talking about a typical synapse it is consisting of three structures the presynaptic ending the post synaptic ending and in between there is a synaptic cleft that means a free space okay so here the presynaptic endings you can see it contain the synaptic vesicles so these are the membrane bound small vesicles which are loaded with neurotransmitters now what is neurotransmitter neurotransmitter is the chemical messenger which are released uh, upon stimulation so there might be a stimulus to release the content of the neurotransmitters in this gap now this gap is the synaptic cleft which is formed uh, between the presynaptic membrane and the post synaptic membrane now this one this is the post synaptic ending you can see here these these are the post synaptic endings it may be a part of a neuron or a muscle which contain the sites for receptors these receptors you can see here these are the receptors which can specifically bind with the neurotransmitters so this binding is very much essential for signal transmission that means whenever there is a stimulus uh, or action potential coming along the axon terminal it will uh, release the inner content of the synaptic vesicles that is neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft and upon release of the neurotransmitter they specifically bind with the receptors present on the post synaptic membrane so there might be a chemical coordination between these three structures now for today's topic first one is types of synapse what are the different types of synapse there are two types of synapse we know electrical synapse and chemical synapse now electrical synapse they are generally the gap junctions this one these are the gap junction which occur between two neurons you can see here these are the two nerve terminals and they are almost closely associated the space between the two neurons are very close to each other okay that's why it is termed as gap junction so at electrical synapse what happens the cells they have direct physical contact the presynaptic and the post synaptic membrane this one is the presynaptic membrane and this is the post synaptic membrane so the pre and the post synaptic membrane of the two cells they are joined at the gap junction these gap junctions are made by specific proteins these proteins are called connections and you can see here the lipid parts they are very close to each other and the space is very less here it is only 2 nanometer distance and the pores which are formed by the connections they allow the easy movement of ions between the cells 
Now, if there is any change in the membrane potential of one cell, suppose here there is any fluctuation in the membrane potential, it will be readily delivered to the, uh, to the adjacent cell. So there will be local current and that will affect the other cell immediately. And it is so immediate that as if they share a common membrane. Therefore, an electrical synapse, it propagates action potential between the cells, between the presynaptic membrane and the postsynaptic membrane very efficiently and without any delay. They do, they do not require any receptor here or any other decoding system. They allow the direct spread of current from one cell to another. So here there is no requirement of receptor mediated uh, signal transmission between the presynaptic and the postsynaptic membrane, nor they require any kind of decoding system. The electrical synapses, they are widespread in human brain. And they, when they are present between neurons, they are very different from the chemical synapse. Why? Because chemical synapse, they are separated by a certain gap. But here in the electrical synapse, the gap is very less. Next, the electrical synapses, they are common in invertebrate and non-mammalian nervous systems, but infrequent in mammals, except between neuroglial cells. In the neuroglial cells, they offer the chief mode of communication. And in case of embryonic central nervous system, they are seen in many places, even in the cerebral cortex, but their number gradually declines as chemical synapses develop. Now come to chemical synapse. So typically these are the synapses. Chemical synapses are the standard mode of neuronal communication in mammals. They are connections between two neurons or between a neuron and a non-neuronal cell. That is, as I have mentioned earlier, the non-neuronal cell may be a muscle, a gland or any sensory cell. These two cells are separated by a space that is the synaptic cleft. And the gap is approximately 30 to 40 nanometer between the presynaptic and postsynaptic membranes. It includes three elements the presynaptic element, such as an axon terminal, a synaptic cleft, and a postsynaptic element, such as the dendritic spine here. So, from the diagram, you can see here. This is the post, sorry, this is the presynaptic element. This is the postsynaptic element. And you can see here the gap is uh, more compared to electrical synapse. And this gap is termed as the synaptic cleft. Now, the presynaptic element, it is characterized by an active zone. What is that? This one is the active zone, which is characterized uh, by the presence of large number of calcium ion channels. The calcium ion channels are abundant in this region. So whenever there is uh, any stimulus arriving at this position, they will uh, let the calcium ion channels to open. And whenever the calcium ion channels open, they will allow the influx of calcium ions inside the presynaptic membrane. And the calcium ion influx cause the synaptic vesicles to fuse with the presynaptic membrane, this one. Now, whenever the synaptic uh, vesicles, they fuse with the presynaptic membrane, they release their content, that is the neurotransmitters are released by a mechanism known as exocytosis. And there is another region, the nearby cytoplasmic region, where the synaptic vesicles, you can see here, the synaptic vesicles are abundant here. So they are very much close to the presynaptic membrane with a particular cytoskeleton arrangement. The regulated release of neurotransmitter occurs at active zones. 
why it is regulated because uh, there is not constant release of neurotransmitter if neurotransmitters are constantly released uh, in the in the synaptic cleft there will be a constant um, contraction and relaxation of muscle so uh, to to regulate this uh, neurotransmitters are only released uh, or the synaptic vesicles they can um, they can release their inner content only upon there is a stimulus so that's why it is written like this the regulated release of neurotransmitter occurs at the active zone so this particular this zone is the active zone in the presynaptic membrane now come to post synaptic membrane so this one is the post synaptic element it is characterized in uh, interneuronal synapses interneuronal means in between two neurons okay so it is characterized by a sub membranous electron dense zone this is the post synaptic density zone which corresponds to the region where the post synaptic receptors these are the receptors so the post synaptic receptors are anchored here why it is anchored here because these receptors they will specifically bind to these neurotransmitters so the density of these uh, of these receptors is more on this region and here there are other transmembrane receptors are also present which upon stimulation they can uh, they can generate some other intracellular secondary messenger molecules okay so this is the structure of chemical synapse uh, later on, we will discuss how a signal is transmitted from the presynaptic membrane to the postsynaptic membrane via these chemical synapses. Hope up to this it is clear to you all. Is there any question? Or may I proceed further, sir? Ma'am? Yes? Uh, you said that from metabotropic receptor, secondary chemical messengers are sent. Is it uh, comparable to the chemical messengers which are associated with uh, uh, hormones? Uh, from the meta metabotropic receptors, there are uh, uh, generation of IP3 or inositol triphosphate and other cyclic AMP related messenger molecules are synthesized. Okay, so if there is any kind of stimuli from the presynaptic end, they will uh, they will convey the message and activate these receptors and the specific receptors they will synthesize specific messenger molecules and we all know that the specific secondary messenger molecules they have different biological applications or roles okay if, yes if it is it is part of any hormone synthesis if it is part of any steroid uh, synthesis yes they will activate this also okay, but all these require any kind of stimulus Okay. Ma'am. Yes. I have a question. Mm, in electric synapse, in this picture, there is one arrow from the presynaptic neuron to post synaptic neuron, and another is from post to pre. It is the bidirectional signal transport. Or Here, anything else. You can see you can see they are very much close to each other. The membranes mm -hmm. are very much close to each other. So there is continuous exchange of ions. If this one is stimulated, then from the presynaptic membrane, the ions they will move down um, down their concentration gradient. Okay. So there is as the as the space is very less here, only two nanometer, there is exchange of ions. And when there is homogeneous uh, concentration of ions, then the uh, then the signal transaction will stop. And you can see here, if you see this one, this one, electrical synapse and chemical synapse. What is the difference? In case of electrical synapse, the signal uh, strength it will diminish over time. So if there is any uh, stimulus which is lost over time, the strength of that stimulus will be also lost. But in case of chemical synapse, if there is uh, one stimulus 
then the signal will be strong enough there will be no loss of the signal okay and okay. in case of, in case of chemical synapse you can see the gap is uh, the gap is more it is about 20 nanometer uh, that is from 30 to 40 nanometer so around it is 20 nanometer uh, gap in case of electrical synapse the gap is very close uh, in case of chemical synapse, the speed of transmission is several milliseconds. But in case of electrical synapse, it is promptly, it is promptly uh, transmitting the stimulus. The chemical synapse, it can be excitatory or inhibitory, but electrical synapse is always excitatory. And uh, in case of chemical synapse, there is no loss of signal strength. But in electrical synapse, the signal strength diminishes over time. Okay, so this is the comparative account of uh, chemical synapse and electrical synapse. Now, how synaptic transmission occurs? The process of synaptic transmission at a chemical synapse between two neurons, between two neurons, this, this one is one neuron and this is another neuron. So in between two neurons, how tra synaptic transmission occurs? First, there is an action potential. So the action potential must propagate from the dendron to the axon terminal. Now, when the action potential, it reaches the uh, axon terminal of the presynaptic ne neuron. First, it has to reach the uh, axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron. So whenever it reaches the axon terminal, there is depolarization of the plasma membrane of axon that is termed as axolemma. So whenever there is depolarization, it opens the calcium channels, the voltage gated ion channels that is the calcium channels, they are opened. Okay, and uh, when the calcium channels open, as the you know that the calcium ion concentration outside is more so it will allow the calcium ions to uh, to um, enter the axon terminal so um, whenever there is calcium influx uh, calcium then will bind with a calcium binding protein known as calmodulin now upon binding with calcium uh, and calmodulin it causes the synaptic vesicles the synaptic vesicles which are preloaded with neurotransmitters they cause the synaptic vesicles to migrate to the close very much close or proximity to the presynaptic membrane so whenever they uh, they come closer to the presynaptic membrane they then fuse with the presynaptic membrane so here the membrane fusion, I'm not going to discuss elaborately. You have to go through that here. The synaptic vesicles and the presynaptic membrane, they are, they are fusing um, with the help of a protein known as the snare proteins, okay? So there are two types of snare proteins. I'm not uh, explaining elaborately here. Just I'd like to mention here, there are T-snare and V-snare proteins which help in membrane fusion. So these snare proteins help fusion of synaptic vesicles with the presynaptic membrane. And whenever there is, uh, there is fusion of these synaptic vesicles with this presynaptic membrane, the neurotransmitter is released. You can see here, there is release of the neurotransmitters by the process known as exocytosis. Exo means outside, okay? So, by exocytosis, the neurotransmitter is released in the synaptic cleft. Now, the neurotransmitters which are uh, which are released in the synaptic cleft, they then diffuse across the synaptic cleft. They then diffuse across the synaptic cleft and binds to its specific receptor. You can see here there are specific receptors. This, this is enzyme. This is the neurotransmitter receptor. So they specifically bind to the receptors on the post synaptic membrane and binding of the neurotransmitter this one binding of the neurotransmitter to, to the post synaptic receptor cause a response in the post synaptic cell now what are the response a response uh, there may be mm, different types of response like 
A neurotransmitter, it may bind to a specific receptor. The receptor is associated with a specific ion channel. You can see here these greens, they, they, these are the uh, neurotransmitters. So neurotransmitters, they specifically bind with ion channels. When opened, uh, when the ion channels are opened, they allow the diffusion of specific ions through these channels. Now, what are the ion channels here? Here, you can see three types of ion channels may present the sodium channels, the potassium channels, and the chloride channels. So upon binding with the neurotransmitter with sodium channels, they allow the opening of sodium channels. As a result, the sodium uh, ions, they rapidly diffuses into the postsynaptic cell. And as the sodium ions, they enter the cell, they depolarizes the membrane immediately. And uh, the depolarization, they, they depolarize the membrane. Uh, if this depolarization reaches the threshold limit, then they will generate an action potential. We all know that to, uh, to uh, get an action potential, the stimulus must cross the threshold value. If it uh, remains below the threshold limit, that is the sub-threshold value, then there will be no action potential. So to reach or to, or to generate an action potential, it must uh, cross the threshold value. So first one, just keep in mind, acetylcholines or the neurotransmitters are released in the synaptic cleft. Now they will bind to specific uh, ion channels. If they bind with sodium ion channel, they will allow the opening of sodium ion channels and sodium ions will rapidly diffuse in and if uh, and cause membrane depolarization. If the magnitude of depolarization crosses the threshold limit, then there will be generation of action potential. Now come to second channel, the potassium channels. The potassium channels are also opened. And whenever the potassium channels are opened, the potassium diffuses out of the cell. And you, why potassium diffuse out of the cell? Why sodium diffuse in? Uh, you know that the concentration of these ions are uh, different. Uh, potassium ions uh, concentration is abundant or more in the inside of the cell compared to outside. And sodium ion concentration in the ECF, that is extracellular fluid, is more compared to ICF, that is intracellular fluid. Okay, so if the potassium channels are opened, potassium channels they diffuse out of the cell, and as there is positive ion loss, it will depress the membrane polarity below its resting potential. That's why in the action potential, you you can get a, um, a declining graph. That part is known as hyperpolarization. This is due to loss of potassium channels. We know that the sodium channels are fast opening and they uh, close fast also. But the potassium ion channels, they open later and they open for a longer period of time. Okay, so that's why as the potassium channels stay open for a longer period of time, there is net loss of potassium ions, that is net loss of positive ions from the cell. That's why in the graph you can see hyperpolarization or a declining graph. Now, if the uh, chloride channels are opened, then chloride ions move into the cell, leading to uh, more uh, hyperpolarization, more negativity inside the cell. So this is one point. Another point is, <coughs> sorry, the neurotransmitter, they may bind to a transmembrane receptor protein, as I have mentioned in the previous fig figure. So. <clears throat> upon binding to the transmembrane receptor protein, it will cause it to activate a G protein. The G protein is present on the inside surface of the pre, sorry, post synaptic membrane and it will lead to a cascade of events which leads to the appearance of a second messenger molecule like calcium ion, cyclic AMP or inositol triphosphate in the cell. These secondary molecules or secondary messenger molecules, 
they have diverse effect on the cell ranging from opening ion channels to changing cellular metabolism to initiation of transcription of new proteins so as i have mentioned these secondary messenger molecules they have diverse effect on cell ranging from opening ion channels or increasing cell metabolism or increasing protein synthesis okay so these are the responses which are mediated upon binding of neurotransmitters to specific receptor you can see here here the uh, receptors these are the receptors so if it bind to any ion channel it has this kind of effects and if it bind binds to a specific transmembrane receptor protein then it may induce these activities inside the cell now what are the sequence of events through synaptic transmission this is my hand drawn uh, so it is not so clear but i i would like to explain it uh, clearly as much as possible so you can understand this is the uh, nerve terminal this is the axon terminal this one and this uh, we can say uh, that this is the synaptic nerve these are the synaptic vesicles as you can understand these round uh, vesicular structures are the synaptic vesicles and these are uh, neurotransmitters okay so um, as there is a uh, propagation of ex action potential from the dendrons it res uh, it it arrives at the axon terminal so whenever there is uh, whenever there is action potential reaching to the active area in the presynaptic membrane this part is the active area you can see here so whenever it reaches to the active part of the presynaptic area the calcium ion channels are opened you can see here these are i have tried to draw these as the calcium channels so the calcium channels are opened so whenever the calcium channels are opened it will allow the free movement of calcium inside the cell and you know that uh, the infusion of calcium inside the cell they will allow the fusion of synaptic vesicles with the presynaptic membrane by some snare proteins now this membrane fusion allow exocytosis of inner content of synaptic vesicles that is the neurotransmitters now the neurotransmitters they diffuse at the synaptic cleft whenever they diffuse in the synaptic cleft they bind with the specific receptors present on the muscle membrane or the nerve okay so here you can see these are the membrane receptors uh, to which the neurotransmitters they specifically bind and whenever they bind they open this ion channels when the sodium ion channels are opened they allow local area depolarization and when there is opening of calcium sorry potassium channels uh, it will efflux the potassium and causes depolarization or hyperpolarization rather it is better to mention hyperpolarization of membrane so this is the sequence of events which occur during trans synaptic transmission so synaptic transmission occurs between the presynaptic membrane and the post synaptic membrane and it is mediated by uh, different ions like calcium sodium and potassium and here the um, ion channels they play the major role along with the neurotransmitters now come to the last part <coughs> sorry the neuromuscular junction what is neuromuscular junction neuromuscular junction it is a chemical synapse okay it is a chemical synapse that means there might be a space of approximately 20 nanometer between the motor neuron and the skeletal muscle fiber this is my hand drawn picture this is you can see here this is the um, this is the neuron this is the axon terminal of neuron end and this is the skeletal muscle in between you can see here there are folds i have tried to draw, draw here these are the folds to which the axon terminal they uh, properly fit and this structure this part this part is known as 
neuromuscular junction or we can call it myoneural junction that is a junction between a nerve cell and a muscle cell like synapse it consists of a presynaptic terminal a synaptic cleft and a post synaptic muscle fiber <clears throat> now you can see here this is the structure of neuromuscular junction so these are the three structures the presynaptic membrane here the post synaptic membrane this pink part and in between this one this is the you can see here this is the synaptic cleft the presynaptic cleft it is an axonal terminal of a motor neuron you can see here the axon terminal it contains numerous synaptic vesicles uh, the synaptic vesicles are loaded with neurotransmitters and the presynaptic terminal they are also having voltage gated calcium channels so calcium channels are abundant in the presynaptic membrane and it is very much important just keep in mind the calcium channels are very much important for releasing neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft okay so if by any means the calcium ion channels are refrained from opening if they are inhibited if the calcium ion channels they properly not open then there will be <clears throat> no fusion of synaptic vesicles and no release of neurotransmitters okay so uh, just keep in mind calcium is very much essential for maintaining our brain health also now this one is the synaptic cleft it is the space between the presynaptic terminal and the post synaptic terminal it is roughly 30 nanometer and it allow the neurotransmitters to diffuse here i want to say something in the in the synaptic cleft the neurotransmitters are released some of the neurotransmitters uh, they are taken up by the post synaptic membrane receptors <clears throat> some are again taken back uh, to the uh, taken back to the presynaptic membrane to maintain a definite pool of neurotransmitters because the uh, neurotransmitters once it is released in the synaptic cleft they uh, when they are bound to the specific receptors they will allow signal transmission and the neurotransmitters which are not bound they must be taken up by the presynaptic membrane because to maintain a steady pool of neurotransmitter in the presynaptic membrane uh, because you know that if there is constant release of neurotransmitters uh, in the cell, there will be um, decreasing amount of neurotransmitters. So uh, whenever the function of neurotransmitters are, um, are over, then they are taken up by the presynaptic membrane. This, is, this phenomenon is known as reuptake of neurotransmitters. And the leftover neurotransmitters which are not taken up um, by the presynaptic membrane they need to be they need to be degraded they need to be removed from this synaptic cleft because you know that there is action potential or stimulus and upon stimulation the neurotransmitters are released so if there is no stimulus and still if there is lots of neurotransmitters available in the synaptic cleft then they will uh, they will go on sending their uh, signal to the muscle fiber but it is not required it is not uh, it is not required by the cell so what to do for that the neurotransmitters which are not required at that moment they will be degraded by some enzyme known as acetylcholine esterase so acetylcholine esterase will remove the leftover acetylcholine present in the synaptic cleft whenever there is no stimulation okay <clears throat> you can see here i have written it also contains enzymes for the degradation of excess or extra neurotransmitters now the post synaptic membrane you can see here in the post synaptic membrane of neuromuscular junction in skeletal muscle uh, there are numerous folds you can see here the part of the sarcolemma it is folded like this forming junctional folds these are known as junctional folds or palisade we can call it and here the uh, the skeletal muscle become thickened the part of the skeletal muscle at this point it become 
specialized structure are thick and this is known as end plate <coughs> so part of the synaptic sorry post synaptic membrane which lodges the uh, the pre synaptic membrane it becomes thickened and uh, highly folded this part is known as end plate motor end plate okay now what is the function these folds these folds they greatly increase the surface area for the neurotransmitters to act and the walls of these folds have acetylcholine receptors you can see here these walls they have the acid acetylcholine receptors on it and these receptors are most important functional part of neuromuscular junction now <clears throat> as i have mentioned this is this is the normal procedure this one is the normal transmission where the calcium channels open um, they allow the influx of calcium and allow the release of neurotransmitters in the in the synaptic cleft and upon binding they release uh, they they convey the action potential and upon upon generation of action potential action potential kokhon hobe when they reach the threshold value and if they crosses the threshold value there will be generation of action potential and action potential it will lead to muscle contraction you can see here these are the signals okay upon binding with the specific receptors these are the signals by which the muscle fibers they act accordingly okay so this is the normal phenomenon but in one disorder in physiological disorder uh, termed as myasthenia gravis myasthenia uh, gravis it means a grave muscular weakness here this is the this is the case here you can see the um, acetylcholine receptors these are the receptors so these receptors are already bound by antibody so in some physiological condition disorder this is a kind of autoimmune disease that means here antibodies are produced against your own own protein here the protein here is the acetylcholine receptor you can see these are the <coughs> these are the acetylcholine receptor and against these receptors there is generation of body's own antibodies the sky blue mark this part so these are the antibodies which can bind specifically and wrongly to the acetylcholine receptor and whenever they bind to the receptors you can see here there is no space for binding of the neurotransmitters and as there is no uh, neurotransmitters uh, they can bind with this uh, with this proper receptors you can see there is no no uh, transmission or the transmission which is which is transmitted from the presynaptic to the post synaptic membrane this is very weak this is very weak that's why we we, we lose um, uh, control over the muscles here uh, you can see this is ptosis in case of ptosis what happens there is dropping of the eyebrows there is dropping of the eyes and dropping of the lips also the muscles are very much fatigued and the muscles are very much weak here so this is a kind of disorder which is prominent in some person who are suffering from uh, mus grave muscular weakness which is uh, in clinical terminology which is known as myasthenia gravis okay so this is all about uh, in short i have discussed all about uh, the types of neurons uh, the concept of neuron how um, signal transmission occurs at the sorry not neurons synapse and how synaptic transmission occurs what is the structure of neuromuscular junction and what happens in case of myasthenia gravis so uh, from today's uh, lecture i can summarize that a synapse is the micro gap between two neurons here i have written two neurons but a synapse may also occur between a nerve and a neuron also and <clears throat> at the synaptic junction there are nerve impulses are relayed and the nerve impulses are relayed in the form of 
uh, in the form of release of neurotransmitters. The neurotransmitters are, are released from the axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron and they are received by a dendron or a postsynaptic membrane. Okay, and here you can also find a space that is the synaptic cleft or synaptic gap. And during the signal or during the tr uh, synaptic transmission, the action potential that is the electrical impulse, it triggers the synaptic vesicles of the presynaptic neuron to release neurotransmitters. So chemical message is released in or conveyed in terms of um, in terms of release of neurotransmitters in the synaptic cleft. The neurotransmitters then diffuse across the synaptic cleft and bind to the specific receptors. The receptors may be ion channels, the receptors may be other transmembrane proteins. Now, the neurotransmitters may be either excitatory or inhibitory. This part I have not elaborately discussed. You can read your own. There are uh, different types of transmission. The transmission may be excitatory or inhibitory. Excitatory means whenever the post synaptic neuron is more likely to fire, more likely to generate an action potential. Sometimes the neurotransmitter is inhibitory also like the serotonin. So whenever this inhibitory um, neurotransmitters are released, then the post synaptic neuron they will not transmit any signal okay uh, they will block the transmission of signal the excitatory or inhibitory influences are summed to determine whether and how frequently the neuron will fire and at the dendrites the chemical message is converted back into an electrical impulse and the process of transmission occurs again so whenever there is any kind of stimulus <coughs> arriving to the presynaptic membrane and if it releases any kind of excitatory neurotransmitter that will be conveyed to the postsynaptic membrane and there will be generation of action potential okay and accordingly the postsynaptic membrane will take action so this is all about today's um, topic and these are the references mainly I have um, consulted this book the review of medical physiology by William Gannon uh, I like to read it most this is very um, good guidebook and these are the some um, free sites from which I have taken some diagrams and for your patience hearing and providing this platform. Again, thank you all. Over to you, sir. So congratulations, Shutapa. Now it is uh, open for discussion. Uh, students, if you have any queries or any questions, you can ask uh, the speaker. Is there any question? You can interact with the speaker. আচ্ছা আমি একটা কথা বলে রাখি স্টুডেন্টদের জন্য এখানে আরো অনেক কিছু বলা যায় যেহেতু লিমিটেড টাইম আমাকেও টপিক এতটা বলা হয়নি আমি শুধু মায়াস্থেনিয়া গ্রেভিস নিয়ে তোমাদের সাথে আলোচনা করলাম তোমরা নিজেদের জানার জন্য একটু করে রাখতে পারো হাউ টিটেনাস টক্সিন এন্ড বোটুলিনাম টক্সিন বা বোটক্স যেটা আমরা বলি হাউ দে ইন্টারফেয়ার উইথ নিউরোনাল ট্রান্সমিশন নিজেদের জন্য একটু পড়ে রেখো তোমরা এটা হাও টিটেনাস টক্সিন অ্যান্ড বোটক্স আর বোটুলিনাম টক্সিন দে ইম্পেয়ার উইথ নিউরোনাল ট্রান্সমিশন স্নেক ভেনম অলসো স্নেক ভেনম অলসো ইম্পেয়ার উইথ নিউরোনাল ট্রান্সমিশন দে ব্লক দ্য বাইন্ডিং সাইট অফ দিস নিউরো ট্রান্সমিটার্স There is a very good advice to the students. Now, is there any student having any question or anyone? Those who are present in the seminar, they can ask the question or if they want to clear their queries, they can interact with the teachers. Can you ask a question? Ma'am, speak up. 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 Ma'am, speak
ম্যাম নন কর্ডেটস এর মধ্যে কি কেমিক্যাল কেমিক্যাল রেসপন্স হতে পারে মানে কেমিক্যাল সাইনাপস থাকতে পারে নন কর্ডেট এর মধ্যে সবার মধ্যেই থাকবে ওকে ম্যাম না আপনি বলছিলেন যে ইলেকট্রিক্যাল সাইনাপসটা নন কর্ডেটস এর মধ্যে বেশি থাকে ওদের ক্ষেত্রে কি শুধু ইলেকট্রিক্যাল সাইনাপস থাকে না ইলেকট্রিক্যাল সাইনাপস এন্ড কেমিক্যাল সাইনাপস দুটোই থাকবে কেমিক্যাল সাইনাপস না থাকলে তো ওরা কাজ করতেই পারবে না কেমিক্যাল সাইনাপস না থাকলে তো মাসল মুভমেন্ট বডি মুভমেন্ট সেগুলো তো হবে না না ইলেকট্রিক্যাল সাইনাপস কি বললাম ভীষণ প্রম্পট এফিসিয়েন্টলি দে ক্যান রেসপন্ড কিন্তু তোমার বডি কোঅর্ডিনেশন নিউরোনাল কোঅর্ডিনেশন হাউ ইউ উইল রেসপন্ড টু এনভায়রনমেন্ট হাউ ইউ কোঅর্ডিনেট লোকোমোটরি অর্গানস অর লোকোমোশন দ্যাট ইজ মেইনটেইন বাই অর কোঅর্ডিনেটেড বাই দিস কেমিক্যাল সাইনাপসিস So is there anyone having any question? Otherwise we will conclude the session. So I think no other questions are there. So now I would request Dr. Sarhuj Kumar Khosh, the Assistant Professor of Bijan Mohabit Dalai and the active organizers of the seminar to uh, comment the vote of thanks. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the organizing committee and the Geological Association of Badwan, we express our sincere regards to Dr. Dotto for accepting our invitation and spend your quality time in favor of the undergraduate student of the geology in the online lecture series. We are indebted to you, Madam, for your informative lecture and sharing your valuable perception with us. I think your important lecture on types of synapse, synaptic transmission, and neuromuscular junction will be helpful for our students in their academic endeavor many thanks to our students for attending the lecture with these few words i conclude the session have a nice day